In today's Gospel reading, we have the account of the call of St. Matthew or Levi. It's according to the Gospel of Mark, and it's a little bit different in, in the other Gospel passages. So, it's interesting that, um, you know, our Lord is criticized because he's eating with sinners. And it is true that when we associate with sinners, we tend to become like them. And this is one of the reasons why the Jewish people kept to themselves. They didn't intermingle with other nations. Whenever they did, they tended to adopt the ways of those other nations. So sin was very much frowned upon, and even within their own communities, those who were sinners were shunned, and certain sins had had severe uh, repercussions. In other words, um, you know, you would have to offer a sin offering, and it's not something you wanted to do. It was a big burden. And in certain cases, for example, if someone was caught in, in adultery, they would be stoned to death. So there was a clear understanding that sin is bad, that sin has terrible consequences, and sin should be avoided at all costs. And it was good for them to understand this. Now, when it comes to St. Matthew, he wasn't just a sinner, but he was an enemy of the Jewish people. Why? Because he was collecting taxes for the Romans. In other words, the Romans had come and invaded the land of the Jewish people, Palestine, uh, Israel, and kind of controlled the area and made the Jewish people obey they, their laws to a certain extent. They did have religious freedom to a certain extent, but they also had to pay taxes. And, you know, just as today, nobody likes to pay taxes. And imagine paying taxes to... Uh, a government that is oppressing you and in some ways restricting your religious freedom. It's not something we would want to do. So Levi or St. Matthew is not just a sinner, but he's kind of the enemy of the people. He's working for the enemy. And because he was shunned by his own society, he associated with other sinners. That's why when our Lord goes to, to eat at his place, there are many sinners, there are many tax collectors. And what tended to happen is, you know, because they're shunned by their own Jewish people, they cannot go to the synagogue, they cannot practice their faith. So as time goes on, they become very worldly and indulge in all kinds of, of sinful uh, behaviors. And because he was kind of considered an outsider, he wasn't penalized for that. He had the protection of the Romans because he was the tax collector. So he could get away with these things. So it's, it's kind of noteworthy that our Lord calls the most unsuitable individual. In other words, from the perspective of the Jewish people, why would anyone pick someone like a tax collector to become a religious leader, to become an apostle eventually. But that is the way that God works. He often calls those who are very unqualified, very unsuitable, and our Lord is able to transform them. So even St. Peter, an, an, an uneducated fisherman, or think of St. Paul, an, a very ardent persecutor of, of the Christians in the early church. So. The, the types of people that you would least expect to call, God calls them. And when God calls them, God has the ability to transform them. And it's a reminder to us that God has the ability to transform us. And he calls us to transform ourselves. He calls us to become better persons. Now, notice the, the last verse in today's Gospel reading. Um, so the people are murmuring, you know, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And then when Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. So the reality is that we are all sinners. We are all called and God transforms us. God is able to make saints out of us. But I wanted you to focus on the first part of this verse. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. Now think of sickness. Think of the coronavirus. Think of the people who are suffering. I mean, it's been pointed out that some people are asymptomatic. Some people have very mild symptoms. Some people have very severe symptoms, and some people even die from it. And most of us don't want to get sick. 
especially with the coronavirus. We avoid sickness. Why? Because we know it's not good for us. It's, any sickness is detrimental to our well-being. Any sickness is detrimental to our ability to act as we want to act. So in other words, if we're laid down with a sickness, we can't function. We may have to rest and, and recuperate to, to try to gain our strength back. So sickness is terrible. So physical sickness we understand. But our Lord isn't talking about physical sickness. He's talking about spiritual sickness. And very often people don't think of sin as a sickness, as a kind of disease of the soul. But it is. And it's far worse than physical illness, physical sickness. So, and in the same way that, that physical sickness is, is more, or, or, or spiritual sickness is worse than physical sickness, so too spiritual death is far worse than actual physical death. So if we are good with God, if, if we have a good relationship with God, if we are close to Him, if we are fulfilled as a human being and are acting the way that God wants us to, then we are fulfilled. And if we have to face physical sufferings or even physical death, we are prepared because we know God loves us. We are confident that God will help us through the difficulties that such an event may, may bring in our lives. So we need to have this, this great faith, this great confidence. And yes, we do need to be the way that God calls us to be. And when we are, we're able to have greater confidence because we know that we are good with God. And he desires this for all of us. So he called Levi, he called St. Matthew, he called St. Paul, he called St. Peter. He calls many people. And sometimes he calls us in in by through our conscience. Sometimes he calls us through the people in our lives. In fact, St. Paul says that unless people hear the word of God, unless people hear the message of salvation, they will not believe. And if there is no one to proclaim it, then how can people hear the message of salvation? And so it is up to you and I to bring the message of salvation to those around us to call them. Now, uh, as I mentioned, and, and I, I want to re reiterate that we are starting our Alpha program. And, you know, sometimes we've, we have people in our lives who are away from the faith, friends or relatives, and we may have tried in different ways to convince them of the truths of our faith. But here's another way of doing it. Call them to Alpha. And you calling them could be uh, an inspiration from God through me to you also. So God is, is reaching out to these individuals through you. So you have the ability to possibly change people's lives, to bring them to Christ, to bring them to the great physician who will heal us of our disordered inclinations, to heal us of our sins, to heal us of our wrong views of reality and what human life is all about. We can only truly live our lives when we understand what it's all about and then we can have great joy despite the fact that we are in the midst of these lockdowns and, and all these restrictions. So let us do what we can to respond to God's call ourselves, to become more the way He wants us to be, to allow Him to heal us, but let us also do what we can to reach out to others and on behalf of Christ, to call them to Christ. Amen.